Hi, my name is TreeMaster04, and in this product review, I'll be reviewing the long-awaited, brand-new O-Gauge 3-Rail 21010 from Lionel. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Union Pacific 4014, do you read me? Over. Roger that. Union Pacific 4014, I read you. Over. Start up and stand by. Over. Yes, sir. To start this video off, let me give a brief history lesson over the real Santa Fe 3000 class that this model is based after. The Santa Fe 3000 class is considered a Malay type steam locomotive with a unique wheel arrangement of two pilot wheels up front, two sets of 10 driving wheels underneath the boiler, and then finally two trailing wheels underneath the cab. These locomotives were originally built as a joint effort between the Santa Fe and the Baldwin Locomotive Works in 1911, and both were able to produce 10 of these giant beasts, starting with number 3000 and ending with 3009. Now the reason why this was a joint effort was because Santa Fe had the wild idea in 1910 to take pre-existing locomotives, in this case 2102s from the 900 and 1600 class, and convert them into Malay designed locomotives. For example, they used the former 2102s to produce the back half of the boiler, high pressure set of cylinders, and Baldwin produced brand new front halves, as well as the famous turtle back tender in the rear. When the 3000 class was delivered to Santa Fe, they soon became the world's largest steam locomotives with an impressive length of 122 feet. In comparison, a Union Pacific Big Boy is about 132 feet, so Considering this locomotive being built in 1911, it was pretty much a beast of its time. By design, the 3000s were meant to be used across Raton Pass by pulling heavy freight trains across the grade and also be used as helper engines on both passenger and freight trains through the same region. Hence why the tenders have the iconic turtle back slope, large headlights, and also cow catchers in the rear. Unfortunately though, there is one design flaw that was not foreseen by Santa Fe, and it has to do with the boiler size. The boilers were deemed insufficient due to their size, as they were not able to keep up with the increasing demand of both sets of cylinders. As a result, Santa Fe deemed the whole class as a failure and started cutting them up into two separate types of locomotives to create the 3010 and 3020 class of 210 two locomotives and produced 20 of them overall between 1915 and 1918. Though these locomotives had a bit of a second life that lasted up into the 1950s, the saga of the Malay locomotives on Santa Fe was tarnished by the 3000s and eventually ended when dieselization came into effect. Fortunately though, we do have one surviving footage of an actual 3000 locomotive operating on the Santa Fe main line. Number 3001 was hired by a film company to produce an episode called Hazards of Helen and is currently preserved and you can view on YouTube at this moment. To make things even easier for you, I'll go and leave a link in the description down below for you to go and view this rare piece of footage. With the history lesson away, let me now go into the next segment of this video and that is covering the stats and facts of the model that you see right in front of you. This model was recently released in Lionel's 2021 Volume 1 catalog and is also joined by three other sisters, being numbered 3001 in a standard black with white walls, number 3005 in a black bonnet, and then 3009 with no white walls and darkened side rods. These models soon started showing up in stores as well as front porches around late December of 2021. For the specifications such as length, the locomotive and tender have a combined length of 31 inches and because of this great length, these models are rated to have a minimum curve radius of 072. Under the hood, this model is powered by a one large flywheel motor and is also equipped with three fan driven smoke units. One being located up front for the main smokestack and the other two being located towards the rear for both the smoking whistle and blowdown steam underneath the cab. Now, since this model is a vision line locomotive, this means that there are a few other extra features that you cannot get in any other specific legacy locomotive, such as specific road number dialogue, stereo sound system, the force coupler, and also the ringing bell. 
For other electronics, this model is equipped with Lionel's legacy rail sound system and is also equipped with Lionel's legacy command system, which means you can operate this locomotive by either using Lionel's legacy command system, which would access all the features that this model has to offer, or you can use Lionel's older TMCC command system, Lionel's Bluetooth command system, or even just running the locomotive conventionally with a transformer and some track. Now let me go and take a closer look at the engine and show you all of the wonderful separately applied and molded in detail that this model has to offer. Starting at the pilot, here you can see we have a nicely painted silver cow catcher with two separately applied steps on either side of it and also many other different details such as two separately applied flagpoles, grab irons, a coupler cup bar, two separately applied brake hose detailing and then right in the middle a scaled dummy coupler. Moving on up, here you can see we have a nicely detailed front deck with multiple steps leading up to the smoke box front, two separately applied exhaust piping underneath the smoke box, two separately applied grab irons, the beginning of two handrails that go along the length of the boiler, two separately applied marker lights which do come on when the locomotive is in operation and can be changed from either the color green, white, or just simply have them off. Above the smoke box door, here you can see we have a nice looking headlight with two number boards on either side. And then finally, right in the center, here you can see we have a nicely detailed smoke box door with the number 3008 in the front. Moving over to the engineer side of the locomotive, starting at the top, here you can see on the boiler it is nicely painted in a black, red, and silver paint scheme to reminisce the Valley Flower paint scheme and is also covered with a few bits of detail, such as mold a molded in step, rivet detailing, separately applied pipe work, handrail, marker light, and also finally a legible builder's plate right in the middle. Looking down below, you can see we have the beginning of the running board which has safety tread on top and is also nicely painted with a yellow stripe. And then finally looking down below, here you can see we have the beginning of the side rods for the first set of drivers, valve gear, and also the low pressure set of cylinders with polished cylinder heads and also a molded in cylinder cocks underneath it. Continuing on down the side of the locomotive, here you can see down below we have the first set of 10 driving wheels as well as a iconic rod that connects to the valve gear towards the front and is also connected to a interesting separately applied valve gear assembly coming through the running board. Now speaking of the running board, here you can also see we have some more detail underneath it such as separately applied pipe work and also a separately applied air compressor tank. Above that, here you can see we also have some more separately applied pipe work coming off and around the side of the boiler, the continuation of the handrail, and also a separately applied number board on top of the boiler, which does come on when the locomotive is in operation. And then finally looking into the middle, here you can see we have this large boiler band with molded in rivet detailing, and in this case, this is the joining band between the old 2102 class of locomotives and the new boiler supplied by Baldwin. Coming towards the end of the locomotive, here again down below you can see we have the second set of cylinders with similar polished cylinder heads and in this case this is the high pressure cylinders that came off the original 10 2102 class of locomotives that Santa Fe supplied, as well as the second set of 10 driving wheels with similar looking polished side rods and valve gear. Moving on up, here you can see we have yet even more detail that is kind of hidden to the continuation of the running board. And in this case, here you can see we have the automatic reverser with a nice looking rod that goes along underneath. And then on the boiler itself, here you can see we have yet even more molded in and separately applied pipe work and also the continuation of the handrail. Looking at the cab and firebox area, starting at the bottom, here you can see we have the trailing truck for this model, as well as some separately applied pipe work, water injector, and also a molded in blowdown valve underneath the firebox. Now, as stated earlier, this model is equipped with Lionel's blowdown smoke effect, which when activated, you'll see a jettison of steam or smoke come out of this hole, as well as an identical one in the same spot on the fireman's side to give the effect that steam is being released from the boiler. Looking on top, here you can see we have the running board which comes down and then terminates in front of the cab with still that safety tread on top and yellow stripe on the side. Looking on the boiler itself, or in this case firebox, here you can see we also have the termination of the handrail, various molded in boiler bands and washout plugs, more separately applied pipe work coming down and on the side of the boiler, and then finally we come towards the cab itself, which is also nicely detailed with the perimeter surrounded with rivets, 
the number 3008 in the middle, the continuation of that silver and red stripe, and then right in the center, here you can see we have two windows with clear plastic inserts, and the one towards the back of the cab opens and closes like so. Moving on around to the end of the locomotive, and as you can see, the detail does not stop at the front door, but still continues towards the back. For example, here right in the middle, you can see we have a separately applied tender deck plate with safety tread on top and a glued on plastic piece so that there is no scratching on top of the tender deck itself. For other separately applied details, here you can see on either side of the cab, we have two separately applied grab irons. And then on the archway of the cab, you can see we have that continuation of the silver, red, and black striping, as well as the yellow that we saw on the running boards. For windows, two on either side of the arch with clear plastic inserts, and then two smaller ones above the archway with two more clear plastic inserts. And then finally looking inside at the back head itself, as you can see, this is where most of the action is happening with loads of different molded in and separately applied details, such as backlit gauges, a separately applied valve work throttle, two separately applied hand painted crew figures and very nicely detailed cab seats. And then finally, right in the center, one nice little final piece for the cab is a swinging door for the firebox to reveal a fierce burning fire within the firebox. Looking on top of the boiler, starting over here at the right hand side, here you can see we have the main smokestack, which is nicely painted in silver to give it a bit of a contrast compared to the black boiler. Now, as stated earlier, this main smokestack is also equipped with a fan-driven smoke unit, and in order to fill it with smoke fluid, you just take your smoke fluid and pour it directly down the stack. Right next to it, here you can see we have the first of two sand domes on this model, and if I take the cover off, here you can see it reveals three switches to operate this locomotive. The first one being the run program switch, the middle one being the on and off switch for Bluetooth control, and the third one being the on and off switch for the main smokestack. Continuing on down, here you can see we have some more separately applied pipe work that we saw earlier. One of two number boards, and then these two humongous separately applied piping that come out of the boiler and then enter right back in. Continuing past the external piping, here you can see on the right hand side we have the second sand dome and similar to the first one, it too reveals a few hidden secrets. As you can see, it reveals two on and off switches as well as a fill hole for both the smoking whistle on top of the boiler and also the blowdown steam located underneath the cab. Now in order to replace the top of the dome, you simply have to line up this brass fitting with the fill hole and once it does, it is held by magnets. Continuing on down, here you can see we have the separately applied brass bell, and this locomotive is equipped with Lionel swinging bell feature, so when the bell sounds are activated, the bell will simultaneously swing back and forth. Right next to it, here you can see we have the steam dome, and similar to both the sand domes, it too comes off, but when it does, it reveals an empty space. So, by any chance you have something small like little flags to put up on front of the locomotive, you can easily storm in this little cavity. And then finally coming towards the end of the locomotive, here you can see we have yet again that smoking whistle with a separately applied whistle piece, separately applied pop-off valves, a separately applied dynamo, and then we come towards the end of the locomotive itself to the top of the cab. Here in this case, you can see we have some minimal detailing in the form of molded in rivets, and then right in the middle, a central vent, which, if I demonstrate, does lift up towards the rear and looks very nice. Taking a quick look at the fireman side of the locomotive, and as you can see, it is primarily the same as compared to the engineer side, but there are a few extra details, such as an extra builder's plate, pipe work, and also two separately applied air compressors near the firebox. With the locomotive now shown, let me now go ahead and direct our attention towards the tender. Looking at the front of the tender, starting at the bottom, here you can see we have two molded in steps, two separately applied piping, and then also right in the middle, the tender end of the wireless draw bar with also an infrared sensor above it. Looking on the deck itself, here you can see we also have yet even more detail, such as two separately applied grab irons, various molded in details such as a sandbox in the middle, and then also separately applied steps going up to the top deck. 
Moving over to the engineer side of the tender, starting at the top, here you can see on the side paneling of the tender itself, it has a nice curve tapering down towards the side of it, which gives it a really nice Art Deco feel, even though this tender was actually made in the 1911s. For detail itself, here you can see it is also riveted with molded in rivets, and also is painted in the beautiful Valley Flower paint scheme with red, silver, and yellow striping, and to top it off, right in the middle with a Santa Fe Herald and striping going along towards the back. Underneath, here you can see we have two sets of six-wheeled set trucks, and then right in the middle, a separately applied toolbox. Looking at the back of the tender, here down below, you can see we have the second pilot or cow catcher, as well as the electrocoupler, which can be thrown by either using Lionel's Legacy, Team CC, or Bluetooth command app. Looking on up, here you can see we have a separately applied coupler cup bar, two molded in steps leading up to the top deck, and also a separately applied brake wheel. For the back panel of the tender, this being a turtle back design, is instead of being a flat vertical wall is instead a curved design, but that does not mean there is not any detail. For example, here we have a separately applied grab iron, steps, headlamp, and also some capacity figures as well as the number 3008. Finally, looking on top of the tender, here you can see the tender itself is actually divided up into two parts. The first one being the oil reservoir and the second part being the water tank. Starting with the oil reservoir, here you can see on top of it we have two molded in toolboxes, two separately applied marker lights, separately applied grab irons on either edge of the tank itself, and then right in the middle, two separately applied oil hatches. And then finally looking at the water tank side, here you can see right here we have two water hatches which do open and close simultaneously like so. Now that I've shown you both the locomotive and tender, let me go ahead, fire it up, and give you a sampling of some of the sound features that this model has to offer. Engine 3008, this is Amarillo Tower. Start up, stand by to pull. Over. Copy that, Amarillo. We'll start her up. 3008, out. First up, here are the five different quillable whistles. Next, here is the bell. Here is the steam blowdown sound. Here is both the water and oil fill up sound. Finally, here is a sampling of both the crew and tower comm sounds. Says we've got one off and three on at the end. 
I got a long freight train hooked up behind the tender. We've been given the green signal, so let's go ahead and move this humongous beast around the layout.
That about wraps up this video, but before I go, let me go ahead and answer the two questions that I normally ask around this time of the video, and they are, what is the original MSRP price for one of these models, and also what is my personal opinion about it? Well, to start off, the original MSRP price is right at $2,500. Now if you want to go and get a better deal, you may be able to pick up one of these models either at Charles Rowe or even at Trainworld.com, as they supply a large amount of Lionel trains and even other model trains in general. Now do be aware, they may even be out of stock at this moment of making the video as these models turned out to be a great hit when they first shipped and supplies have started to dwindle. So if you want to get one of these models, do not hesitate to go and get one as supplies may not last. Moving on to the second question, which was, what is my personal opinion about this model? Overall, I was actually quite surprised Lionel was finally bringing these models back as when they first said in 2009-10 area, they said they were not going to be producing these models again nor any other type of Vision Line model as it would be a one-off collector's item and that was that. But since they have come back, I was overjoyed as I was one, too young and did not have the funds at the time for the first 3000s and was happy, like many others, to be able to get on the bandwagon finally when this second release of updated models came out. For the model itself, I was actually quite stunned at the accuracy of detail, the smoke units, sound system, and also the beautiful paint scheme, especially that Santa Fe crest on the tender, and overall its performance. Now do be aware, these models have popped up to become a bit of a tedious model with a few teething problems, either boards blowing up, smoke units burning out, or even the side rods falling apart as the bolts connecting them to the drivers have been coming unscrewed. But these models, most of them, have been actually quite good. Well, that's it for this video, but before you go, I just want to say thank you very much for clicking on this video and also watching it to the very end. Now if you would like to further support my channel, please do click on that subscribe button as that will allow you to no longer miss any of the future videos that I produce. And also if you enjoyed this type of content, please also click on that like button as that allows me and also YouTube know that you enjoy this type of content. But anyway, my name is Trainmaster04 and I'll be seeing you next time.